Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at the ASUS ZenBook UX305CA. So this is the second generation of the UX305, um, based around the new Skylake Core M3 processor. The original used the Core M, I think it was the 5Y10 or the 5Y10C, and this new model switched that up for the new Core M3 6Y30 chip. So this is a very low power chip, um, around about 4.5 watts I believe. Um, so it's designed for sort of long battery life rather than high performance. Base clock is about 900 megahertz, um, but that does turbo up to, I believe it is, uh, 2.2 or 2.3 gigahertz under load but obviously because of that TDP it's for short time periods and in the box we have our charger quite a nice little unit here not too big non well sort of standard for ASUS AC adapter on, uh, AC connector on it we also have a USB 3 Ethernet adapter handy because I'm going to be using this as my own work laptop so having something which lets me connect this up to Ethernet networks, very useful. We then have the laptop itself, which I'm going to place to one side for a moment. And as a little bonus, we also have a little case for it as well. So this is a UK model. Um, we only really get the one model here, which is the 3200 by 1800 screen, uh, a 128 gig SSD, and uh, eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, there may be a higher spec model as well uh, with the 256 gig drive, but I was unsure if those were imports or not. We've got nothing else under that, so we've got our manuals here, warranty card, I'm not gonna worry too much about that, and it looks like we have a cleaning cloth or something in there as well. But let's take a look at the laptop itself. So we're just going to unwrap it from the cellophane there, put that to one side. So yes, this is a 13.3 inch laptop and I've gone with the sort of grey black colour scheme on this particular one. See here we have our Core M3 badging and, and yeah, it seems a nice small laptop. Um, I believe the chassis is a mixture of metal and plastic, so we have sort of pressed metal around a plastic frame underneath. But we've got quite a sort of MacBook Air kind of vibe going on. Um, down in here you've got sort of the slots for the cooling to exhaust from. Uh, your same sort of chiclet style keyboard. I don't believe we get any kind of backlight on this. Now, taking a look around the laptop, we can see on this side we have a pair of SuperSpeed USB 3 ports and we also have our SD card reader. If I just find a card to go into that, and we can see with this, if we put the card in, card only goes in a very short distance, uh, that's because the chassis kind of tapers down to the keyboard, so obviously there isn't enough space for the whole card to go in. So you can't use this for sort of long-term storage, but if you need to read data off of your camera or your phone card, that's certainly an option there. Turning it around. On the other side, you see we have a another, th so a third USB 3 super speed port. This has got a little power logo as well, so we can use this for charging phones or tablets. We have our power jack micro HDMI out and a headphone socket. So compare this to something like the um, 12 inch Retina MacBook. Uh, you get a lot more port options, so you've got plenty USB 3. You don't have USB-C, which some may view as a negative, I view as a positive because I don't have any cables or devices that use it. I'd much rather have those USB 3 ports. Now, if we push this over to one side now, and we're going to dig out here a MacBook Air that we have. This is a Sandy Bridge MacBook Air, but it's much the same chassis as the current models. And you can see, 
So comparing the thickness of the two, um, I'd say the base on the UX305, a little slimmer. It gets propped up actually and lifted slightly when you open the screen, so it folds flatter than the MacBook Air at this thicker edge. Um, it doesn't taper down as much either in the edges of the screen or the front of the chassis, but I'd say overall thickness is very similar to the MacBook Air. It's actually like that, we can see it's a touch slimmer. If we were, however, to turn both around, we'll see at the front edge, then that way the MacBook Air does take a slight advantage. So, sort of peak thickness, I suppose, is higher on the MacBook Air. Uh, minimum thickness is better on the MacBook Air. So depending on what's more important to you there, I'd say it's pretty much a draw. Now powering it on for the first time. And one of the things that really attracted me to this laptop was we have this nice matte finish to the screen. So when I'm out and about, if I'm working somewhere with a lot of light, I'm not gonna get crazy reflections like you do with a lot of the glass fronted screens. And like I say, we've got the 3200 by 1800 resolution on this as well. So we get Windows is DPI scaling straight out the box, so we get nice smoothing on the text, and everything looks quite nice. Uh, the negative of this compared to the 1080p screen that was in the previous model is you do lose some battery life. Um, I've seen reports saying that battery life on this should be around about I think it was uh, eight hours, which is fairly reasonable, but in the same tests, I believe the previous model with the 1080p screen uh, got around 11 hours. So you do get a fairly big difference, but you get a nicer screen, so you've got the trade-off there. Um, for me, it's probably worth it. I do a bit of photo work while I'm out and about, so being able to get a higher res display in Lightroom will be a benefit for me. Uh, obviously being very low power as well in terms of power consumption you shouldn't get a lot in the way of noise um, There's only four and a half watts to deal with from the processor and graphics So it should be able to dissipate that fairly effectively One thing which is limiting of course is you've only got that 128 gig SSD um, Some markets do have 256 gig options uh, Some markets do also have a 1080p option UK we only get the 3200 by 1800 but I have here a 256 gig M2 SSD, so we'll be taking a look in another video at fitting that. Anyway, that's sort of a quick unboxing and first impressions of the machine. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a 12 inch MacBook to compare it to, but I think it comes up quite favorably compared to the MacBook Air. We have less processing performance than the current MacBook Air, but a much higher resolution screen and for me for what i do i do need uh, windows 10 for a lot of my work or windows at least for a lot of my work um which is obviously a big benefit i also feel this was pretty good value um i've paid 550 pound for this particular machine um i've paid 100 pound for the ssd to go in it as well now taking a look around the standard windows image um not too bad there's a few bits more in here than I might like. Um, I'm going to be reinstalling this onto the new SSD anyway. Um, so we've got the options to get Office, uh, the standard ASUS web storage, McAfee, which will be coming straight off, and the ASUS USB Charger Plus software. Um, and looking at Task Manager at Startup Items, actually very little in there. Um, a lot of the time OEMs have this habit of just stuffing junk you will never use onto a machine. Um, and this doesn't really seem to suffer from it too much. Um, we don't have a absolute mass of pre-installed software. Um, so I, uh, we've got a fair bit of applications from ASUS in here and some things like Cyberlink. So not thrilled to see all of that on there if I'm honest. Um, but because it's not all coming up when the machine starts up, 
I wouldn't necessarily say you need to go through and clean install this. You could probably use it and be pretty happy with it. Um, compared to some of the Lenovo systems I've had through where you have the combination of mechanical disk um, and a huge amount of stuff starting up every time you run the system, this isn't too bad. Um, one thing that I would like to have seen in the box, which I thought about as well, connecting this up to the video capture card, had to go and dig out a um, mini HDMI to HDMI adapter. It might have been nice to have one of those in the box, but they're only a pound or two, so at the price point for the machine I can't complain too much. Um, in terms of just using the touchpad and the keyboard, um, obviously no backlight on the keyboard um, but it does have a nice feel um, considering this is a fairly thin laptop I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, there's not you know too much flex or anything like that so I think I'll be happy enough with the keyboard um, and touchpad it feels a little stiff initially um, I'm sure that's one of those things that will wear in just as you sort of smooth the surface of it a little bit as you with use so first impressions of those parts of the laptop pretty good um, certainly not obviously bad um, normally if you feel one of these and it's particularly you know if these inputs aren't right you're gonna feel it all the time and there's nothing on first impressions that really feels bad on that but I will have a full review of this coming soon as well, as well as looking at performance and some other aspects of the machine. So hit subscribe if you want to see more on the UX305 CA on my channel. And let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in the full video in the comments below. Thanks for watching.